Well, happy Friday, everybody. It's almost Sabbath. Anyway, so this morning, um, I wanted to sing a song with you guys that was actually written. It's a Two Little Fish song, but a bunch of, those are two of my students right there, and they know it, and they always want to sing this because it's just fun. So anyways, it's called I Will Trust in You, and I want to teach you how the, <clears throat> I want to teach you how the chorus goes because it repeats enough that it's easy enough for you guys to pick up on. And it goes like this. You ready? I'll sing it, and then you guys sing it after me. I will trust in you. La -da -da -da. Ready? I will trust in you. La -da -da -da. That's pretty simple, right? We do that three times. I have to kind of sing it so I know where I'm going. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Then we go up just a little bit. I will trust in you. All right, let's try that one more time. Good job. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Trust in you. La -da -da -da. Are you guys sound good. You ready? One, two, three, four. I will trust in you. La -da -da -da. I will trust in you. guitar on. Yep. That's fine. Okay, this is kind of an older one. And I say older, but it means like I sang it in high school. But I think a lot of people may or may not know this. I 
This is called God of Wonders. <clears throat> Lord of all creation. song. Let's stand together. I, I heard we were, oh, do we want to do this one? No. Yes, I think each one reach one. Yes, it is. Savior and 
today? I know I am, and I just don't know about you, but from the looks of things up front here, we're going to have a really, really good family worship. We're going to have a whole lot of people telling someone about Jesus. So we're going to get started with Pastor Jim, Jimmy Buchanan. He's going to lead us in our health minute, and then we're going to have a squatty body, and then we're going to have a, what is it, kids? A minute to win it, and then we're going to move right into our story time by Bradley Booth. So before we get started, let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this day, for the blessings that you've given us. And I just pray, Father, that you will help this to be a powerful time for you. Send your Holy Spirit in this room. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Stuart. Well, folks, today we have an interesting topic. We're going to talk about skin. Skin, that's right. Do you know that the skin is the largest organ in the entire body? Some of you knew that. But here's a, here's a fact. If you took the skin of your body and literally stretched it out to about 22 square feet, you know how big that is? Pastor Stewart figured that out. He said it's about the size of this entire table up there. If you stretched your skin out, that's how big it would be. That's a lot of skin. Now, the skin we know serves a lot of purposes for the body. It helps fight d diseases. Um, and also, uh, it holds water in our body, but at the same time, it allows the bad stuff to come out of sweat. Uh, it even maintains our body temperature. Uh, it holds vitamin D and gathers information through senses and stores fat to insulate us against the cold. God uses our skin to keep us looking beautiful and handsome. Now, I'm not sure what happened to me on that deal, but, you know, we'll talk about that. Now, here's another fact. One square inch. How big is one square inch? About like that. Now, check this out. There are three yards of blood vessels. This is in one square inch. 36 heat sensors, 75 pressure sensors, 100 sweat glands, 600 pain sensors, 900 nerve endings, 1,300 nerve cells, and 3 million cells total. Folks, that's incredible, isn't it? In one square inch of skin. So how is it possible to squeeze so much into that area? It's only possible through God. Amen? So um, think about that. Even when you cut yourself, the skin has a way of healing itself. Doctors can do so much, but the healing comes from God. So thank God today and appreciate the skin that you have. Blessings. Good morning, everyone. Today is our last squatty body. And we're going to miss him. I know it's so sad. But before we get started, I want to mention a couple things. So this summer, we have summer camp, and we're looking forward to all our young people joining. Who can tell me what our theme is this year? Can anyone? What is it? Go ahead. The armor of God, you are so close. It does have to do with the armor of God, but our theme is power up. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. So we need to power up. So today we want to introduce Squatty Body. So let's go. Oh, Squatty Victor, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> Uh, are, are you awake? Are you okay? Uh, 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 Squatty Victor. Wow, what a surprise. Uh, Squatty, what's going on? Uh, uh, 
was having a nightmare. I was having a nightmare. What? Wait. What? What were you dreaming about? Oh, I remember. Oh, I, it was camp meeting. And, <laughs> uh, I was been. Oh, it was terrible. I was like waterboarded, and and forced, and I had these tiny little legs, and it was terrible. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm still half asleep. Oh, I need to wake up. You do need to wake up, Squatty. If you look around, uh, you're not alone right now. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, there, where, where am I? Where am I? What? Well, well, Squatty, we're at camp meeting here at Valley Vista. Where else do you think we'd be? Oh, oh no. Oh, no, again. Not again. Not again. No, I, I shaved. I shaved. I don't need to shave again. I drank water. Don't waterboard me. Oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, what's going on? I'm. I need to get ready for the day. I you need do to need to get ready. Day. Squatty, you got to get going. You got to comb your hair. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like combing my hair. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have as much as I used to. It's terrible. Uh, whew. There you ah. go. There you go. Wake up, Squatty. Oh, Wake cool. up. That's cool. Uh, oh, that's bad. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, right. Oh, man. Oh. All right, how about those teeth? Uh, uh, you know, I, those, I, those, those, those teeth, the breath is a little foul, Squatty. I, uh, I stopped brushing my teeth because it's just too hard. So I just chew lots of gum. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm good. No, I can't control it. It's terrible. I, I, you know I have nightmares. I, I can't be. I'm having nightmares. Wait, wait, wait. Why were you so terrified when you woke up at Valley Vista here at camp? Don't you remember last year? Everything happened to me. Everything bad. I like wake up. I was like, Charlie's out to get me. He's going to get me. Somebody's going to get me. I need to protect myself. It's going to happen again. I know it. Oh, man, I got to get ready. I got to get safe, man. They're after okay. me. Okay, uh, who's after you, squad? I don't know, but they're after me. I can't even hear where the lights go. Um, that's happening. Oh, man. Oh, that's not going to hold it. Just, I just don't know. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Just... <laughs> There. All right, I need a shield. You got a helmet. You've got a shield. Oh, you've oh. got a sword. Okay. I don't want to get waterboarded, though. <laughs> Come on. It, it seems as if you're fighting or you're gearing up as if evil was about to come get you. I'm, I'm worried about it. I'm worried you're, about you're worried it. about it? Well, where would it come from? Oh, I see it coming! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Get me away from it! Get me away from it! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! I need a bigger steel! I need a bigger steel! Oh, Ammunition. Squatty, squatty, you're in there. I think the enemy's finally out of ammunition. Oh. It sure is a good thing that you had all that armor on. <laughs> oh, man. 
man. Well, oh, oh boy, I think y'all need to come to come to summer camp. That's what I think. There's all kinds of crazy stuff they do. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, Squatty. Can we give a round of applause for Squatty? Squatty will be missed for this year, but he may be back. We never know. Anyways, I want to say a couple words before we go um, about summer camp. As I said, um, our theme this year is power up, and I just want to read a verse out of Ephesians 6, 10. It says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So we need to remember to put on the full armor. <laughs> everybody. The fun is just beginning. I hope you guys are enjoying this. We've had a good time. And uh, Victor does make a good squatty buddy, doesn't he? Um, we're going to go to... A minute. To win it. Can you say it with us? A um, minute to win it. And we need ten, ten volunteers. Ten volunteers. Ten volunteers. You'll notice I got up during the practice. All right, the right there. Wait right second. there in the middle. Before, the, before we did this, how many noticed that I went and hid the toilet paper? Because oh, I was afraid it was going to get wet and ruined. And you so, two here in the front. Anyway, so we need 10. Right here, red in the back. Cameron. I'm going to have you guys out Nate. in the front. How many do we have? Probably more than you picked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need three more, right? Three more. Three more. Three more. All right, let's go over here. How about Grace, the little girl standing on the, the, the chair? And one more. How about that young man in the back right there? No, that's you with the Valley Vista shirt. Come on up. RJ, come on down. You're the next contestant on, we don't know what it's called. So what we're going to do, we, we have some, who was here yesterday? If you were on yesterday, we're going to have to sit you back down. That's the rules. Were you up yesterday here? No. Okay. Who was here yesterday? Anybody here yesterday? I think I was here yesterday. You were here yesterday? Get All out right, of here. Nate and Grace are gone. We You're need gone. two more. You pick, Stuart. We need two more? You pick, Pastor Pepper. Okay. Um, have you been up yet? Uh, have you been up yet at all? Who hasn't been up? Hannah, Anna, you come up here. And who else? We need one The more. one in the orange. She the hasn't one, been up at one all. one in the orange. Let's go. Come on up. But not to yesterday. So, okay. So, okay. We got our ten contestants. So, this is a toilet paper wrap. We're going to make you look like Lazarus, but we're not really talking about the state of the dead. So, probably what you're going to want to do, we're going to sep let's Do we separate them in teams? Here's a team. Yep, that's a you're team. You're a team. You're you a are team. a team with her. You're a team okay? with her. You're um, a team. You two are a team. That's a brother and sister team right yeah, here. There we go. We got 11. We got a problem. Uh oh. We need. Nope. Well, do we have enough toilet paper rolls? Where's that extra toilet paper roll? Yeah, we need another roll of toilet paper. There was one more. No, no, no. No, that won't same. work. That won't work. I don't see Amber, so we're going to have to sit one down here. Amber's, Amber's to get getting it. it. Okay. Oh, so, there she is. So what we're going to do, All right, there we, we need go. one more person. We need one more contestant. One more person. And I got 30 volunteers. Oh, let's see here. No. Oh, oh. All right, right there, the butterflies. All right. You got picked. You're, cho you're chosen. You got to go this way. All 
You're spinning around in circles. That's good. We need to wrap her up. <laughs> anyway, okay. So what we're gonna do? Each right, of listen you, to Pastor now Pepper. Now be careful. Each of each team gets one roll of toilet paper. One person is the wrapper, and one person is the the wrappy. In other words, the one that gets wrapped up. Now the object is we're gonna have the audience judge at the end which one is the most wrapped for the winner because the judges are getting tired of getting blamed for everything, okay? So we're going to let you judge which team is the most wrapped and we're going to do it by voice vote. That's all right. All right? So, but you've got... Watch, can you do wrap? That'd be funny. Well, they don't have another toilet paper roll. Here, give me that. Where's that paper towel roll? Give that thing to me. Here we go. Do you want to be wrapped or you want to wrap me? Oh, you want me to wrap you? So, yeah. Either way, I don't care. Maybe, maybe it would be better if you wrapped me. Okay, I'll wrap you. So I'll help you if you need anything. Any mic. Why don't you do the wrapping? So somebody needs to be here to talk. Okay. So yeah, that's a good idea. So, so I'm wrapping Elder Bailey. Yeah, that oh, works. That's that's the that's the best way. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so we're gonna go into a minute to win it. Now give each other room. The, uh, you don't want to break your toilet paper, but if it does break, just tuck it in and start wrapping. And the little guys have an advantage here because the littler the person, the easier it would be to get them all wrapped up so we can't see any part of them, okay? From your toes to your head, we want to see how much of you we can get wrapped up. So, face two. Oh, everything. We're going to wrap them up all the way to the head. And then you got to stand there without peeking so that we can have you wrapped up. You've already ripped your toilet paper. Be careful. Okay, you guys ready? We need a timer up. Are you guys ready to wrap? Get your teammate. The game begins ready? in three, three two, two, one. Go, 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 go. Oh, we have, we have skills. Spin around. with the wrap in here. We got 28 seconds to go, guys. <laughs> Six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, everybody stop. Oh, I think we might have, we might have a, well, we have a winner and then we have some goons here. All right, so we're looking at these teams. Let's put our five contestants out front here. One here. Okay, no more rapping. All right, we got one here. Some of you are looking and saying, I think we might not have won this thing. So, okay. I don't know who this is. Might be Izzy, but we can't tell for sure. Yeah, so, I'm not sure that. All right, is. by voice vote, who thinks this one won? Yeah. Woo! Okay, how about this one? Uh, how about this one? How about this one? This one? How about this one? How about this one? Yeah. No, 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 wait a There is one more. How about this one? This one right here. <laughs> they don't even take my, they won't boo you even if I tell them to. Yeah, so, so we have a winner right here. Now everybody can go pick up. Where's the prizes? There they are. Go over. You can unwrap now. By the way, while they're unwrapping and getting their prizes, what is this? When we wrap her all up, that was supposed to be the, not Lazarus, but the robe of Christ's righteousness. Did you notice how easy it was to rip that robe off? That's why they had to start a hard time because it's, it's, it's gentle. So we, we can't really, we can't change Christ's righteousness, but we can make people feel like they're not covered with it. And so we want to make sure we're careful with people. And hey, don't waste all that toilet paper. You were pulling that toilet paper. That's, That's why we want that. to be covered in his righteousness, Pastor Pepper, home. right? Not our own.
All right, we're going to turn it over to our speaker, uh, Pastor Bradley Booth. Smells like a wet dog up here. <clears throat> Are you nervous? Am I nervous? We still got ammo. All right. You have no idea, sir. <laughs> All right, very good. Welcome back. Welcome to the final day of uh, the week, weekly camp meeting. How many of you have really enjoyed this week? Oh my, this has been a first time for me at this camp meeting, but I have to say, it's the most picturesque camp I've been to. I've been down to them in Washington State, Nebraska, Kansas, Minnesota, Dakotas, Massachusetts, Michigan, Florida, you, know, you name it. This beats them all. When you get out here, there's really hardly any going back to town. It's so far away. So I haven't been out here all week. And uh, except for the technology, connection to the outside world is almost nil. Uh, this is a book that came in just this week. Um, they just published it. I didn't even know they were publishing it. But this is a combination of all the stories, a story from each of the little booklets in the God Said It series. So you'd like to have, if you'd like to have a copy with a sample from each book, you can put, you know, in the classroom or in your child's bedroom or on the coffee table for visitors to look at. Superheroes. Who's your hero? You know, when we ask kids, who would, who would you like to be like or who's your hero? Often they pick sports figures or uh, movie stars. When I was a kid, I didn't know about those things. So I always, I always picked Bible heroes. So who's your hero? Everybody then says, Jesus. So, you can get these in the bookstore. Um, we're a little short on time. We've got 20 minutes. Just want to let you know. This is a little sheet I produced for the kids. So this is something we will hand out at the end. And what it says on here is, can you remember the details from our stories this week? So if you can remember the title of the story, we're going to go through it one more time. That's why I'm not passing them out right now. Um, a, the title of the story each day, and then one verse. You don't have to write the verse out, you just give me what the text is. And um, if you can get that accurately, we will give you a prize. You'll have to come looking for us because there's no way to do this um, without getting it into your hands ahead of schedule. So we'll give it to you at the end. You can take it, fill it out. I don't care who you get your help from, probably not me. I probably won't give you the details. All right, kids, we're going to do one more song this week. You want to help me out? Come on, kids, line up right up here. He's able. It's solo time. Come on, kids, don't be afraid. Last night, I promised them cookies if they would sing well. Not today, but they would sing well last night. And it was amazing what a cookie can do, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks to our lovely hostess, the lady in charge of the kitchen. She offered to make them for me. So I get no credit except handing them out. Okay, we're gonna do He's Able. And you all know it, so sing loud. He's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He healed the brokenhearted and set the captives free. He made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. That's why he's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Thank you. Give him a hand. Oh, I owe you one more cookie. Did you hear that? <laughs> Payment for everything. 
Okay, we're going through one more time, so. Minus the cameras on your phones taking pictures of the screen, I'll move fast. So you'll miss a few of them and get confused, right? So what was the title for the first day? Yeah. Cavern, right. And a verse? Okay, so we're going to go through and I'm, you're going to say, oh, I didn't get it. Nobody ever says Proverbs 13, 20. But then we have? Oh, so some people, some people are keep, were thinking, Isaiah. That comes later. Psalms 107, verse 6. And what was the story for the second day? There it is, bread and water guaranteed. And a verse of scripture? Oh, 33, 16, we got that one, bread and water. And the next one? My, the, my favorite. And then the verse of scripture for the, I'm sorry, the title for the third day. Miracle on the Mountain, title of a book that we had back here. We actually have found that we have one more. I thought we were out, we have one more. So Miracle on the Mountain and a verse of scripture. 8611, that was the verse that was incorrectly printed at the top. It, this is the one, Psalms 8611. And if somebody remembers that, they deserve a cookie. And 21217, the name of the story from yesterday. Follow me, follow me. Great, great words of advice, aren't they? Not me. Well, follow Jesus, right? And the verse of scripture, Psalms 1 verse 1. And Matthew 419. Now, the, one of the verses we're going to use today is from the same chapter as Psalms 1 verse 1. So that should help, all right? Story, uh, the verse of scripture for us today is found in Psalms chapter 1 verse 6. This is a chapter you must memorize. Only six verses long. 23rd Psalm, the, the shepherd, shepherd Psalm, six verses long. So there's something magical about six. Okay, let's read it together. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So in this verse, we have advice for two groups of people. How many groups of people are there at the end of the year, uh, end of the world, end of the year? <laughs> Only two. Not a third one, not somebody in the middle saying, well, you know, I am not sure I want to be a Christian, but I don't want to really be a bad person, so I'll be right in the middle. And Satan says, yes, that's where I want you because then you won't be thinking about what is right or what is wrong. You'll just stay in that safe zone. It's not a safe zone. You either choose for Jesus or you choose for Satan. So our story today, around the sun to meet the moon, I'm going to give you a slice of both sides to, to remind you of what happens when you go back and forth. Well, let's see. Today's Monday. I think I'll be good today. Tomorrow's Tuesday, I think I'll be bad. We don't do that, but we end up being that kind of a person. And our verse today says, don't do that, because if you do that, you end up doing what my mother used to say, you're going around the sun to meet the moon. What we mean is, if you want to go to the moon, just go to the moon. Don't go 186 million miles to the sun and back. Don't do that. Just go straight 243,000 miles to the moon and be done with it. Right? That's a good thing. All right, let's pray today as we begin. Father, thank you for your words of advice in Scripture. These are words of life. Please, Father, help us to remember that there is only one way, and it's Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. amen. All right, they gave me 12 minutes. Yesterday we went over a little bit. We may go over five minutes today. This is the most phenomenal story I have in my, in my repertoire from my years of working for Jesus. And it's not a story from the mission field in Africa or Russia or Thailand. It's a story from here in America to let you know that this country is truly the mission field now. And, and, and you know I'm saying it's, you know, you know it's true. But when you have someone come up to you and say, we're praying for you Americans, Chinese students in Thailand saying, we're praying for America. I don't say why anymore. I say thank you. Amen. We go to help them. That's a story for another day. We go to help them, and they're saying, oh, we want to be more like you Americans. And we say, please, no. No, don't be like us Americans. Please stay pure and focused on God. 
amazing stories coming out of China. If you have not heard the latest stories coming out of China, you must, you must, we must do that another day. Amen. On the West Coast, I was asked, it was a little interim assignment between posts that I, I, I work for various universities. And in between one of those, those two assignments, I had an assignment on the West Coast. So I went out to help a school on the West Coast, a little school out in the peninsula of Washington. Anybody ever been up to the peninsula? Okay, they're way out on the edge of the, near Squim. And you've been up there? Okay, kind of a neat place, isn't it? Yeah, pretty cool. It's like the ends of the earth. You go there, there's no McDonald's, there's no, you know, Hy-Vee or Safeway, or none of those. They're just really, really cultural um, Puget Sound country. And in this area, a lot of people live who've never been outside of the county even. Um, when you try to take the kids out for field trips, they say, can't you stay closer to home? I just want to go across the Puget Sound, you know, 11 miles to go to the zoo. They're, they're not used to that. And so these people, would, they'd send their kids to public school, but, but in their simple Christian experience, they said, this is not right. We can't send them to the public school where the kids at recess go across the street to smoke their pot and the cop cars are going by <laughs> and waving at the kids. These are eighth graders and seventh graders. And the, the students who come to my school said, we, we can't go to that school anymore. It's, 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 it's not a good place to be. We can do anything we want. One girl said, I took algebra last year and I turned in two assignments and I got an A. She says, I don't want to grow up like that. So they came to the school, all of them. It was a hodgepodge of students like you've never seen. I had Jehovah's Witnesses, Lutherans, Catholics, Native Americans, all of the, all of the religions. And here I am with, in the classroom with only one Adventist student in my room. This is the most missionary school I ever had. My second year, a girl came to the school because her family had moved and she wasn't gonna go to the public school. This is an unusual girl as they go came from a family, uh, her father was, a, uh, who was upright, godly people, her father was a police officer, and um, they sent her to our school because they wanted a place where she would be safe, where she would receive some encouragement, you know, aspirations to do something with her life. And she'd come every day, all excited, this eighth grade girl, wow, and I'm gonna be a lawyer. And I said, really, I believe you could do that. She says, oh yeah. And she started telling me about her previous school, all the things that they did there. And, and would we do some of those things in our school? I said, well, give me some examples. She said, well, one bio bi biology class, we would take notes so we could remember what the information was so we would do well on the test. Pretty hard to get a lot of kids in the seventh grade to take notes. And that's not even high school material usually. It's usually college and more, more and more college kids won't do that. They'll just take a picture of the screen, right? And so all the kids said, okay, let's take notes. She got everybody fired up and they started becoming a little more academic. And then she said, we need to have a student association. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, we need student officers. So she started organizing the kids and, you know, they got a president, they got a, you know, sergeant at arms, they got a social vice, you know, all this going on. And, and come on, let's do a student field day, contest day where we invite other schools to come in. So they arranged all the kids from kindergarten all the way to 10th grade. Each team had to have one student from each of those grades. And they started doing all these competitions. It's amazing things. And I saw this girl and I said, this girl has a star. She's gonna shine for Jesus like nobody's business. And so the end of the year was coming. And I said to the students, would you like to go visit the academy? They're all, they're all non adventists Would you like to go see the academy down across the Puget Sound there? Auburn Academy. Yeah, let's go. And so they all arranged. There was like, I think, five eighth graders, and they all got in a car, and they, we all took off and went down. And, and uh, Jessica, my eighth grader, was so excited because she went through and took all the tests and just passed with flying colors. You know, they put her in high-level classes. They put her in band. They put her in debate team. They put her in choir. They put her in gymnastics. She says, I'm going to do it all. And I said, I believe you will. She came home and went home that night and came back to school the next morning. Something had happened 
And as I looked at her, she was, her head was down. She looked very sad, and, and all the kids said, what's wrong, Jessica? She said, my parents won't let me go to the academy. They say it's too expensive. And I said, in my proverbial way, don't worry about the money. We'll find a way. We'll get the money for you. You can go. We will make it happen. I said, we cannot have this child sacrificed for lack of money. I'll go door to door in town and, and raise money if I have to. <clears throat> She went home and talked to her parents about my proposition. And her father, being the man he was, says, no, we'll manage. So we had the year-end exercises, the graduation, the year-end talent show. She, she was involved in almost every aspect of that program. And then she they departed for the summer. And I took a job at Atlantic Union College and left. And I always... My heart pained for all of those kids who knew what was right, but didn't come from homes where their parents encouraged them to practice those things. You know, they knew about the Sabbath. I, I will never forget the last day of school, the Native American girl who'd come from Montana said to me, she stood up, she's a sixth grader, she says, well, I think I speak for us all. I think I, we all know which day of the week is the Holy Sabbath day. I tried not to let them see how shocked I was. And another one said, yeah, and we know that if we want to go to heaven, we need to be like Jesus. And another one said, and we know Jesus is coming soon, so we shouldn't be doing all this nonsense, taking drugs and, you know, hanging out with bad friends. I said, really? So that last day of school, I had done a little poll, I'd done a little survey, and had the kids come up, and each one of them, there was 14 students in the classroom. Each one write out what they thought the most important thing it was to do to be saved. And then I took that and I put it on a little sheet and I wanted to do a test run on the classroom. I, so I passed it back out and they were supposed to rank it from 1 to 15, 1 to 14. What's most important for you to stay close to Jesus? You would be shocked if you saw that because... I did not preach to those kids. I couldn't. They came from so many different walks of life. I just had to be an example for them. In our Bible classes, we talked about the values and the, the basic principles of salvation. And obviously, they saw that I was a vegetarian <clears throat> because one of the eighth grade girls said, I want to be the weather girl on the weather channel. And then she'd walk around and say, and I'm a vegetarian. And she'd look at the boys, what they were eating on their sandwich. She'd say, if you want to eat roadkill, be my, be my guest. <laughs> And those boys would give up their meat because, boy, did they think she was something. This was the class that had developed under our tutelage for those two years. And when we saw that ranking, what do you think was number one? Want to take a guess? Well, Jesus was all through it. The Sabbath. They said Sabbath is number one. You know what they said number two was? Keep the commandments of God. You wouldn't even get adults saying that here in this room. You wouldn't say, well, commandments are important, but I think, you know, helping others is more important. Or um, giving Bible studies. No, those kids had figured it out. You know what was near at the bottom? Where it should be? Jewelry, music. Those things are important, but they're not as important to us as the Sabbath and the commandments. That's why we don't focus on those. Sometimes people come to us and they're doing some of the things that we think, well, they haven't been with us very long. Those kids had figured it out. And Jessica, with all of that, was departing through the doors. And I'm going, Lord, what's going to happen to these kids? They don't really know Jesus. They just know about Jesus. I've tried to help them. Took my post in Atlantic Union College and was there, got into my new assignment as a professor of psychology and education. And then, and then I noticed that they had a program at the college where we were supposed to go out to all the cities all over North America and the world where we went out to the teachers who came to us for accreditation. A lot of them were not Adventists. They were just in various places like Los Angeles or Houston. And one of the teachers was from Port Townsend, Washington. And so we're in our staff meeting and and our chair said, so who wants to go to Port Towns in Washington? Pick me, pick me. And they said, you want to go? I said, yeah. I, I kind of became the go-to guy to travel because I like to travel. 
So I went there, and I said, come on, kids, let's all get together. And so all the kids from that, that class that I'd had, all 14, came together, except one. One person was missing. Who do you think it was? Jessica. Jessica. And I said, where's Jessica? And they all dropped their heads. Nobody wanted to tell me about Jessica. But, you know, I could be pretty persistent. I said, okay, guys, what's the deal? What's up? I got to leave tomorrow. I need to know. I said, well, Jessica's kind of gotten kind of crazy. Really? Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, that summer, after you left, she went off the deep end. She started hanging out with all the guys in town. The guys were two and three grades ahead, riding around in their big four-wheel pickups, you know, all over town, laughing, and she was drinking. Jessica? Yeah, Jessica, because she had nothing to live for. She went to back to public school. There was nothing there for her. Nobody challenged her. Nobody said, you want to reach here? Aim high, as my mother used to say. Better aim high, or you might miss your target. Don't aim for the target. Aim higher than the target. Otherwise, you might miss it. She had nobody to challenge her those things, and so all that talent, all that giftedness going to waste because she no longer had faith in herself. She evidently, she thought, nobody else has faith in me. My parents sure don't. Then they said something really bad happened to her this spring. This was like in May when I went. It was like in April. Something really bad happened to her. I said, can you tell me? She says, yeah. She was out drinking with her friends. And, and if you've been to the Puget Sound area, you know it's really, really a damp place. It's just always damp. Even in the summer, it's damp. It's like you go outside at night, and it starts getting chilly, kind of like it does in the desert. Except it's worse, because as that fog rolls in from the sea, it just chills you to the bone. Well, she was with her friends, out in, and drinking in a park, all sitting on picnic tables. Kids, pick your friends well. If they just want to sit around, hear a camp mean and do nothing, that's not your friends. Pick your friends who want to do things that are constructive and things that will take them to the stars, because that's where Jesus is. He's up there now in the star, among the stars, and he wants you to be one of them. Don't pick your friends that just hang around and do nothing. And that's what she had done. She's sitting on the picnic table with them. How many beers she'd had, nobody knew, but they were all totally plastered, as we used to say. And they were sprawled all over the picnic table. Some of them were on the ground, and the temperature was dropping fast. Now, in April, it's, it's, you can get hypothermia. In, in, in April, you can get hypothermia because that damp air takes your temperature down, down, down. And the, and the, the danger is that that temperature drops so low that you can't get it back up. And that's what happened to her. Now, from that point forward, what happened was a miracle. All her friends all wiped out on the picnic tables. Finally, some of them began to rouse themselves, and they got to, began to get up and help each other off to the car. And nobody noticed that Jessica was still there, sprawled across that picnic table by herself. And they left her there and went home, fell, fell into their beds asleep, and there was Jessica, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Meanwhile, down the street, this is an amazing part of the story, down the street, a man was going to bed. Not a relation of hers, not an Adventist, just a good man. He was going to bed, he was getting into bed, and his custom was he took his shoes off right by the bed. Some men do that, I don't. Not allowed. Shoes stay by the door. And he gets in bed and begins to read. And he hears a voice saying, go down to the park. His wife's not in the bedroom yet, so he says, turn the page. He's reading, go down to the park. He gets up. His wife comes in. What's wrong? Oh, I don't know. He gets back in bed again. Picks up his book. Go down to the park. He looks at his wife. She says, are you okay? I don't think so. 
what's wrong? I just heard a voice tell me to go out to the park. She looks at him. Well, if you heard a voice tell you to go to the park, you better go to the park. <laughs> Good wife. Nah, this is my imagination. And he starts reading again. She goes, I wouldn't do that if I was you. <laughs> Closes the book, sets it on the stand, gets up, puts his boots back on, goes out, gets in his pickup truck, and drives down to the park and pulls in. And there his truck lights are shining there on the area there where the pavilions are. And he sees a picnic table. He says, what am I doing here? This is ridiculous. Good thing there's nobody here to see me walking around in the dark. The patrolling officer would sure, would sure say, Joe, what do you know? <clears throat> and then he thought he saw something. He looked, and through the fog, he could, it was a person. So he jumped out of the truck, ran over to the picnic table, put his hand on her face, and she was ice cold. Oh, no. He grabbed his phone, called his wife. I got somebody here on a picnic table. I, I, this is an emergency. I'm going to go to the hospital. Meet me at the hospital. And then call the police and t call the hospital and tell them I'm coming. And he scooped up that girl, ran back to his truck, put her in, and roared away down the road about seven miles to the prison, uh, to, to the hospital. Got in the hospital. He's rushing in there. They know he's coming. Bring her over here. And they laid her on a bed and they started trying to resuscitate her. They couldn't resuscitate her. She was as cold as ice. They say her temperature had dropped lower than any temperature they'd ever heard of, of a person's temperature going. You get down, I, I've, I've read somewhere the threshold is like 82 degrees. Now, our, our normal body temperature is 98.6. I, I think it was 82, and there's like one person in history that survived lower than that, and they said, she's gone. Nothing we can do. And by now, her mother and father were rushing in, and her mother was a disaster, and her father was... And the mother's shouting at him, you know we should have sent her to that school. That was the problem. That's where it all started. And the father's a police officer trying to be respectable there among his colleagues in the hospital. What's he supposed to say? You know, he wants to quiet his wife down, but he knows she's right. And they can't revive her. And they're putting heated blankets on her. And they're taking her and putting her in this, in this solution to warm her up, and they can't revive her. And then her mother said, we have to pray. Amen. And they began to pray, of course, weeping. Oh, it's like they were already at the funeral as they're weeping for this girl, this amazing, gifted, talented star in their family, laying there purple with cold. And then suddenly something magical happened because the color began to come back into her face and she began to have a stronger pulse and and the doctor's saying, well, we've got a pulse, quick. And they brought in some adrenaline and to, you know, to give her a shot, summoned to her heart to resuscitate her. And she came out of it. Right. And everybody's like, this is amazing. Yes. She was not there that weekend. I couldn't, I, couldn't go, I couldn't go back to see her. They said it wouldn't matter. She's not the same. She was without oxygen too long. So when she fell into her subconscious state, her breathing was so shallow that she's not right. Said, Sorry, Mr. Booth. And I left very sad, thinking about this girl who was brought from death to life and a wasted, a wasted soul, it seemed like for me. And I thought that was the end of the story. But it wasn't. Praise the Lord. And this is the rest of the story for you. And we'll tell you when you come back. Oh, no, we don't have any more days. We'll have to tell you today. <laughs> I've done that to students. Just to get it back in the fall, I'll do a continued story in the spring, and they'll say, if you want to hear the end, you've got to come back in September. No, tell it now. <laughs> and I don't. Especially for all the non-Adventist boys. But anyway, the rest of the story is, she, I was going through Messenger one day, and suddenly this name pops up, Jessica Harp. That's been a long time. Could that be the same person? So I typed in, are you Jessica Harp from Port Townsend back in 96? She goes, that's me. 
I said, how are you? Where are you? He says, well, I'm about ready to get married. It's going to be a 4th of July wedding. You want to come? I said, yeah. I didn't get to go because COVID kept us from going. But we have chatted many times since, and I found out the rest of the story. The rest of the rest of the story. When she went into a coma and was out in her subconscious state, in her mind she's praying, God, don't let this be the way it ends. I have messed up my life, but I know you can put it back together. Because that's what Mr. Booth said to us in school. And so the, the angels helped her. They all rallied as they do when they're fighting back the demons. And she came out of it. And then they did the second miracle. They gave her back her mind. Bright girl, very intelligent, very happy. And I said, do you mind if I write this story in my next book? And she said, I'd be happy if you did. So I wrote it, and you can find it in one of our books. Um, there's none of them available, so you'll have to order it. It's called Around the Sun to Meet the Moon. She did, in fact, go on a long journey to find Jesus. But at least it's better to go around the sun to come back to the moon than to fly off somewhere in space and never come back at all. Yeah. It's, better if, it's better to have loved Jesus than to have never loved him at all. Because if you love Jesus once, he will make sure you have a chance to love him again. And my verse in closing here for us is Romans 7, verse 15. What I am doing, Paul said, I do not understand. For I, what I will to do that I do not practice. And what I hate, that's the thing I do, O wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Do you think Jessica was delivered from a body of death? Yes, and her mind and her soul was brought back from the brink of eternal ruin because she had chosen the world over God. I think many of us in those circumstances would do the same. But praise God, your angel and my angel said to themselves, no, this girl cannot be sacrificed. Come on, let's go. And I can see 25 angels hustling to rally around her and push those demons away. Angels that had never been assigned to her case because they had other duties to perform. But they're saying to the father, can we go, can we go? And God, the Father, says, sure. I'll need some of you around the throne here, but yes, some of you can go. When you get to heaven, you will find out all the amazing stories like this one where angels rallied to the support of people who said, Jesus, I won't let you go. Even though I can't do what's right, I keep doing what's wrong, I do what I hate, and I don't do the things I know I should do. Please, Jesus, help me in my ridiculously negative state to turn me around so I point to Jesus again and become that unwretched person. Will you pray with me today as we, as we pray that prayer? Oh, Father, we come to you on our knees knowing that there is no other way to, for salvation except through Jesus. And if somebody tells us there is another way, we cannot listen, Lord. It is you who have come into this world to die for us. We didn't deserve it. We weren't actually in line to be saved. But from the foundation of the world, you said, that person must be with me where I am by my Father's throne. And I will go to the earth to give my life for them if that's what it takes. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Thank you for giving us power every day to live through Jesus. Please help us to, to share our testimony with someone who doesn't know you because that's exactly what they need to hear in order to come to the foot of the cross. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Can we say thank you to Pastor Boo? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.